Good evening! Jesus Christ, okay. I have no idea what state everything is in right now. How's audio and video? We'll see what's going on over here. Uh, yeah. Everything kind of went to crap for a little while there. I had, uh... Hey up! Yeah, the, uh, the capture device I'm using... I was really annoyed about the fact that the color quality has been all over the place. And I was I went to OBS to try and mess around with it because it turned out that it looked pretty good in the Hophog capture software, but not in OBS. And then everything went to shit and I had to, I don't know, restart it wasn't doing anything. The device wasn't capturing, so I had to change drivers and shit like this. So we are back up just in time. And um, today, luckily, because I'm exhausted, we're just poking around with the toy. Um, yeah, let's try and get ourselves set up. I've got coffee brewing, so I'll have to go grab that in a second. <sighs> Alright, so we're going to be looking at Render Dock. Let's restore a session. That wasn't the session. Fine, we're going to go looking for Render Dock now. Because that was just fixing other shit. We're going to be looking at this, which is some software for doing loads of graphical debugging. So, the first thing to do, I suppose, is really... Oh, I don't even have a... Uh, uh, chat on this machine at the moment, so I'm relying on you for links. It's render.org is where we're starting. It look, looks, looks like it can capture all kinds of good shit, so that's where we're going to start. Right, let's have a look. So the first thing to do is go and get a build. Um, so whatever, I'm downloading the kind of regular Linux one. Um, I have downloaded, extracted it, and in the this is the extracted bit, and in the bin folder, we're going to get Q render doc, and we have this. So, um, by the way, how are you all doing? Um, <laughs> I got everything a bit. It's a backwards sort of day. So let's um, let's see what's going on. Lots of hellos, hello. Um, I should do the greets actually. Let's see who's looking today. Uh, bug number thirteen: Darius Novo Pom to Pimp. Our Primer Sync Commander and Shimera. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's see what we got going on. Um, Shimera is recommending the Magewell USB Capture HDMI card. Nice. Oh, it's actually a little external brick. That sounds really good. I will. Let me open that on this machine now. Um, and I will check that out later. This thing has been. Oops, sounds like coffee's ready. Uh, this thing's been pretty good. I just Yeah, but I'm not sure what's going on with OBS related to it. But yes, today it's not being, um, not being so great. Sorry you're feeling down, Shamara. Down. You know what I mean. Um, okay, so we first need to um, either launch an application or attach to a running instance. Now, apparently... Oh, okay. So this was open as well. Let's actually close these because this is what we're looking for. We've got render doc. Bam. We've got this link. This is some fucking around. Um, which is by our very own Jace. Um, and it's about how to use uh, render doc with common lisp. The first part doesn't require um, common lisp at all. Like, well, sorry, it doesn't require any specific common lisp. Um, integration, uh, but there's some bits that this starts to allow you to do to use the render doc API. So what we're going to do is do this bit first. Now it's a little different on my machine. Uh, let's have a think about how we're going to do that. Um, yeah, let's copy this. Let's bring this open and bring up a command line and we are going to export this. I, I've got a just seeing if that was a wasp flying in. Um, I've got a local build of SBCL. So let's actually now. How's the best way to do this? No, not that. Oh, come on, dude. What's going on? What is that? I am on the wrong key bindings. Okay, so. Just to help myself out. This should be what we need. So it's calling render.command, just like Jace said down here, with capture, minus W, and then the path to SBCL. SBCL is going to start up. We're going to quick load swank. Um, 
we are going to go swank create server don't close make that true right so now that's set up um, we're going to need to come into Emacs well that's not Emacs Emacs is under there and rather than doing slime we're going to do slime connect we're going to connect to localhost and the port was 4005 so we're now connected which is good so next bit I'm going to split this vertically and let's just quick load and some example stuff so I'm going to load a couple examples I'm just going to move this down here actually we don't need to see it too clearly yet uh, I'm going to go into the package um, camera I'm going to go and get some example code so code lisp the works kettle dot examples examples and let's do a basic geometry shader I'm going to compile all of that and then just back here you might be able to see I'm going to say run loop oh no I've got to do kettle repl first oh wait is this right I think I want to actually connect to this now this is all going to be very cramped because this is a pretty shitty resolution to be trying to do this but I think what we can do now is if we say attached to running instance, there's SBCL. Let's connect to that. Say Keppel Repl. Great. Okay, so we can see at the top here we've got some writing. That wasn't me, and that isn't Keppel. Um, this is to do with this. And we can see over here now it says that... Um, OpenGL has been like the connection is established and it knows what API we're using, which is OpenGL, not presenting because we're not actually uh, running this yet, so not producing any frames. But now, if we say run loop, um, we should see OpenGL active. This is happening. And then, if we hit F12, we might even get something. Or we might not. Or is it. Oh, wait. Am I. No, this should be correct. Let's see. Let's try print screen. There we go. <laughs> okay. So we have just captured one frame, and if we double click on it, it's gonna unpack, and hopefully we can go into here and start looking at information. Now, what I'm gonna do temporarily is make this full screen, oops, and then we'll start digging through this. Um, Darius saying that setup was smooth. You didn't see the uh, about an hour of me fucking around with this, trying to like, oh, maybe I can connect it to Emacs, maybe I can connect it to this. Yeah, it took, it took a while, I, I mean, in the end, it was just easier to follow follow the instructions that we were given. Um, but yes, we have some stuff. But there's a lot of shit here. And um, while we can poke around, let's do a little poking around first and see what we can see. Um, but this should be done with coffee, because otherwise I'm going to be asleep very soon. One second. Okay, coffee, 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 coffee. It has been a long week. I'll tell you, man. Uh, lots of work going on on Tailspire right now. Uh, we just got another, well, well over 1,500 people into the alpha. And uh, yeah, that's going well. It's going really well. Uh, we're ramping up quick Kickstarter, which is relatively soon. I will keep you posted on that next week. Oh, yeah, there's all this stuff to tell you. Next week, we won't be doing a stream because um, I'm going to be streaming instead about the uh, what happens next in the Tales by Alpha and things like that going forward. I'll be doing that from 9 to 11. This is actually the, an announcement of that, but I will be posting this all on the uh, Tales by Discords and Reddits and forums and things like this. Um, hey up, Alex. Um, yeah, so that will be going on. Um, yeah, I, I haven't done the main announcement of that on Tailspire because we've because we've just let a load of people in. We're trying to let them get settled first before we start going. Hey, everything's about to change. Sort your shit out. Um, but it's gonna be fine. It's nothing, nothing dramatic. It's just these are the plans we've got. This is the Kickstarter. Ah, uh, okay, coffee. Let's go and find our 
documentation and we'll see what render doc is and um, yeah let's see getting started quick start so capturing a frame that's what we just did um, so that's about launching an application so render doc in app there's a fairly minimal app overlay just to indicate the render doc is successfully loaded and is ready to capture a frame that's the stuff we saw up there which is perfect that was Come on, do it there. Um, cool. When the application exits, if you capture if you captured a frame, it will automatically start open in the render doc UI. If you didn't capture a frame, then nothing will happen. Um, if you made multiple captures, you will see a capture list. Well, it's quite nice actually that we just you don't have to exit. We can just keep on keep on going. Render docs layout can be customized fairly heavily, so this selection will cover default layout. Okay. Texture viewer. This does sound cool. That's pretty much what you'd expect. It allows you to inspect textures and render targets in your application. There are various visualization controls. Now you can select different channels, mip maps, or other things. Right, so let's go back. There's going to be a lot of flickering around today. We don't need this open anymore, so let's close that. Okay, right, texture viewer. We're here. Nice. Are there, um... Well, this is really cool. I like that you can see the two different render steps here. But am I, in, am I still in the texture viewer? Yeah, I guess I am. That's good. So maybe this is kind of context sensitive as we go through here because I'm seeing when I when I come in here these are two different draw calls by the look of it if I split this and bring up Emacs here let's look for a map G and we can see two map G's and two draw calls um, it's using one of the fairly long variants of um, draw elements uh, but that just makes it easier I mean it, it means there's less branches that Kepler has to do on every draw call and stuff like this so that's actually something we had to do. It's something we did on the stream a while back, actually. So, but I'm interested in what it's talking about as far as textures. I can see, like, we've got here the the um, back buffer depth stencil. We've got the color. And you can see here with all the, once all the normals have been drawn. But I don't see a place to see the other, like, the texture for... Um, this texture basically where do we get to see that um, and has that been captured it would be really cool if it has maybe it's set with the program whoops where have we gone now now we're in resources let's go back to texture because um, I want to do this one at a time really this is GL program and then this is the Call to draw instance. There's the uniform matrix. So we're doing the matrix upload there. But we're not having to do a, we're not doing a texture up. We're not specifying a texture by, by the look of it. Okay. So it's not super obvious. Oh, wait a second. Oh no. That's inputs is empty. Do we have. Oh shit, there we go. Nice. Let's bring this back up full screen. All right, so as we go through here, not only do we have the what we've got from the last frame, I guess, when it's saying frame start, we'll have to look that up soon. We've got a geo clear, then we've got a draw, and we can see the texture that was passed in. Oh, this is nice. And then this is the back buffer and back buffer sense back buffer depth stencil that was produced. That is really neat. Okay, so that's great. So we've captured shit tons, damn. Okay, so. The thumbnail stripped uh, by default to the right lists either the output targets or shader inputs bound and used at present. Yeah, well, it helps to read once in a while, doesn't it? Jace, welcome. We haven't actually loaded your um, integration yet, but we do have RenderDog running and we do have a capture and we're, uh, yeah, we're starting to play through. Ah, we will be paying tribute to that soon. Okay, so. 
Right, to open a specific texture and watch it, even as it changes slots or becomes unbound, you can open it in a new locked tab. Double click on it, right click on it, and open it in locked tab or open it by name. All right. Oh, neat. Okay, so let's try that again. If I close that and go, hey, open in locked tab. Right, so that's what that looks like. All right, okay, so that is going to keep showing it regardless of um, what state it's in. Whereas here, yeah, now it's unbound. Yeah, and unbound again. Interesting. Oh, of course, yeah, we don't. Do we not bind it for that one? That's interesting. I guess we don't. Let's have a look at the uh, code. No, it's correct. So we, we have the first first draw call and we pass in brick as there's the uh, texture let's uh how can we show this better i'm going to split this page in half and we're just going to go up to draw sphere and we can see that we have a input text which is a sample of 2d and then we're sampling it here swizzling it down and doing some shit but that's not important right now um, yes, I'm also passing up a matrix, which we'll get back to. But that's cool. So we pass it up here. We don't pass it up here, which is why when we are in this, we can see that it's unbound at this point and it's current here. And it's at current and input zero. That's nice. So what happens as I go through here? That's cool. Okay, so the inputs don't show yet, but once you've picked one, then when you move through history, you can see where it's bound or not. That's interesting. Cool, okay, well that's gonna be nice to work with. Um, the format and dimensions of the texture are displayed in the status bar, just below the texture display itself. Let's bring this up here all right g8b8a8 unorm yes and all that jazz cool is there a way actually what would be really good is if we could um, settings is there a way to set the font size on everything in here because that would be rather handy it doesn't look like it now that's fine, but no. Okay. Say Levy. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so we continue. Um, is there anything else we want to read about here? The thumbnail strip, format and dimensions. There is a small zoomed in context, this guy down here. Around the latest packed pixel available. F latest picked pixel available. Okay. Nice. Last thing we will highlight is the range control. It is a fairly flexible tool that allows you to adjust the visible range of the image. Where is that? Oh. Interesting. Oh, I see. So it's for like remapping color ranges. We will look at that again at some point. But I want to get into this. What is this event browser thing? It's the primary method of stepping through frame, uh, stepping through the frame and browsing the events that occurred within the first column, EID event ID, indicates which event or API call this was in the frame chronologically okay wow which event or api call so they don't all map to api calls and it's somehow got some grouping going on there as well which is pretty dope um oh jace but jace sorry i'll read this out jace is saying i admit i haven't wrapped a ton of the api i've been busy with other stuff no problem at all man it's really cool that um, any of this is already done so it's it's really nice 
Um, Darius is saying just clicking every button instead of reading the documentation. That looks awfully well. Yeah, you need to you need to bounce back and forward. I need to need to have somewhere to hook the information into. Okay, so there's a whole like so this. This is a bunch of um, Vulcan stuff he's looking at here and going down. That's dope. Okay. Columns can be customized and reordered. The select columns button will allow you to choose which columns are displayed. Fine. Which is that one, apparently. Um, draw number. Duration. Ooh. I don't know what draw number means in this context, though. Because this isn't a draw call. These are draw calls. Oh, maybe a geo clear is a draw? Yeah, maybe it is. Okay. One to three, one, two, three is swap up as a draw call? Or is this an API call? I'm not really sure. And then we've got the amount of time. Okay, so we're obviously not instrumenting that right now. I will turn off those and go back to the defaults because we're plenty enough crowded as, or, as it is already. So. Uh, so yeah, they're saying they can be Expanded or collapsed. And keyboard browsing is available through normal controls, yada, yada, yada. The current event, i.e. the event at which we are currently expect, inspecting the graphic state is highlighted with a green flag. So this one. Um, and the row is highlighted. As any row is selected, it immediately becomes the new current event. When the event browser is selected, you can press the shortcuts Control F, Control G to find or jump to a specific event ID. Yeah, that's cool. Bookmark button will add the bookmark. Makes sense. This is really, oh great, we're onto this now. API inspector, this is really cool though. The fact that if this is the actual state of everything, I'm interested what these numbers are. No, so this is event ID. So is this, why? So what decides whether it's clustered under here or presented here because this six I guess matches this is an event ID six is six two is here okay so it seems to be the last one in the group okay so they're grouped together and there's a bunch of things underneath here that's kind of cool I guess it's like from the point you've done use program these things are referring to that program um, so that is kind of nice. All right, let's keep going then. Um, this is where it'll just tell me the questions I've asked. Um, the API calls window updates as a new event is selected. It shows the individual API calls and their parameters between the previous and current event. Okay, yeah, so between here and here, this stuff happened, or this stuff really. The bottom entry in the list always corresponds to the event that's currently selected. Hooray! And each row can be expanded to show the parameters of the past to that API call. At the bottom of the window is an optional expandable section which shows the call stack if available and recorded, which it is not. Um, from the application code into the API function. In order to view these call stacks, you must first resolve the symbols recorded with the capture. To do this, click Resolve Symbols under the Tools menu. <laughs> Uh, that makes sense. Okay, so it doesn't explain exactly how it groups them, unless I missed that. Okay, wait a second, here we are. Events which are listed here are generally output draw type events, including clears, copy and map type calls, are not included and are available in the API calls view below. So, so again, this is grouping and this is the stuff um, within that group. And there's some kind of logical way that they're defining this up. In this case, yeah, we can see it's clears and stuff like this. I'm, I'm interested in this frame start, like what, what makes something a frame start? Um, this context configuration thing here, I'm not sure what that is. GL init params, I don't, are we really calling that every, every frame? 
That seems strange. Unless, unless this is what it calls to find out some of the information. I'm not really sure here. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, let's go back down the timeline bar. We've got a very, very simple timeline up here. We have... I'm not sure what this line is. Does it move? Yes. Okay, so this is... This line seems to map... Oh, is it the center of the event? Yes, it seems to be at the center of which event we're in. The EID. Okay, this one here. And this is color pass, which is this whole thing here. Is there anything else? Okay, so if we click on them, yes, it's going to focus them. Oh, it didn't click. It didn't focus that. That's interesting. Okay, we can click on the EIDs and jump to those, sort of. Okay, only if they map here. Well, that's a little clunky, but sure. I can work with that. Um, but, well, might be clunky. Might just be that I haven't read the fucking docs. Okay, the timeline bar is essentially a view. It's an alternate view of the frame, with the horizontal axis being time with, um, in the frame. Horizontal axis is scaled evenly by API core, such that every API core is the same width at any given zoom level. Zoom. Okay, yeah. Frame marker hierarchy is top down in this case and can be expanded or collapsed by clicking on each section. Okay, I guess it's just we've got nothing underneath this, so we should probably switch over to a little, um, a little more advanced um, scene because we're just doing that simple geometry one. But let's let's go a little further with this first, and then we'll see what we have going on over in chat glass of ethanol got me a key for tailspur hooray nice one go go find some bugs yes when the current selected texture is used in the frame each draw call that references references it draws a marker below the bar um oh uses for texture 90 reads writes read write and clears Purple marker indicates the draw call at that point is writing to the texture, and a green marker indicates that it is reading. That's interesting. Are these. Oh, right. Wait a second. Is that. Nope. It uses the same colors for the indicators whether it's the dark or light thing so I'm not entirely sure what that's coming from um, okay so this is the key so I guess they've updated the colors or it's a different theme but we can see where this is happening so I guess we just don't have anything down here oops All of it will become clear in time, I'm sure. Great. Oop, not that yet. Nice. Yeah, I mean, this is a currently selected texture, so... Where are its uses? Because it's definitely used in here. We can see it's used here, in fact. But it's used here, but not bound here. So maybe, it, maybe it's when it's bound. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, da, da, da. This can be a very useful tool to trace time through a frame. Okay. So let's go to pipeline state, which is here, which we just cannot fit in because of this shitty setup. Um, what we could do actually is just let's um, hide this and move this shit over. Okay, so that's a little better. I will just have to make do with this being very squished. Um, seems like I'm not using this right now. Let's get rid of this shit. Is there a... 
there a thing here we can we can move out the way I do not know this stuff so I don't know what to be fucking with here if there's anything obvious that jumps out that I can get rid of F margin that'll do there we go nice right um let's continue so pipeline state pipeline state window is perhaps the most detailed but also the simplest to understand this window simply lists every stateful aspect of the graphics pipeline and what value or object is present at that current event okay by default pipeline will not contain empty or unused entries i.e if a shader only reads from resources zero and one even if something is bound to slot two it will not be displayed likewise say slots three to 128 yeah you get the idea and you can toggle that behavior that's cool one important thing to note is that most things in the sections uh, for each pipeline stage can be expanded to view in more detail look for the go icon to indicate that a more detailed view is available nice all right well, let's have a look. Um, whoa, okay. So now we're somewhere else. We're in the mesh viewer. And that's the mesh we passed in, which is awesome. Um, oh, dope. That is really cool. Is there any, any other way I can move it? Oh, okay. I'm not sure what I'm controlling with WASD at the moment, but not exactly what I was going for, but sure. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, so does it maintain the the clip space while it's moving around? Oh, I wish I could read this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to make this a little smaller again. Now we've got some more space. Show this draw. Oh, God. Whole pass. Oh, flat shaded. Solid color. Sure. Right. Wireframe stuff. Highlight. Not sure what that is. That's fine. Something to do with the picking we could do. Now, I don't have an intuitive thing of what is going on there but we are like this is the output from the vertex stage so it is going to be the position scene clip space so i'm guessing that's what it's showing and this is it in model space which makes sense um controls arc ball okay and wasd so all right i'll get to understand that in time i'm sure groovy okay so that was a bit of a distraction let's get back here so where are we we stepped through the frame. Let's start here. Let's start with the clear. Actually, I still don't understand this, so I'm not really sure what to... What is the deal with context here? Context configuration FBO. Like, I'm not sure exactly what I'm referring to at this point. Yeah, we'll have to get back to that. Okay, let's go here. Because at least this, but I should be able to understand some more. So you got a mesh view you can jump to. There's a triangle list. Sure. Um, what's this? Okay, so this is the vertex array object. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at here. Okay. So we bind a program. What if I click this? Where does that take us? We're into the resource viewer again, out of the pipeline thing. So this seems to be... Okay, so... Oh, right, so this is just uh, to do with the input stuff here. Okay, so really this stuff is kind of separate from this view. So we should just focus on this and see where it takes us. Okay, nuke it till it works. Away. 
Oh, don't make me do web dev, please. That would be awful. Okay, so we've got we've got formats. I, w I just want to compare this with what we expect because I want to make sure that I'm I'm seeing what we've defined. So this is the first draw, in which case we were doing where was it? Map G. We were drawing a sphere. We we're taking the sphere stream. So let's go and have a look at that. Where is that set up? We made it by. Okay, so the format is GPNT. So we can look at that position normal text. Terrible naming. It'll be changed one day. GPNT. Um, what have we got? So it's position normal texture. Vec three, vec three, vec two. So is there any way to fuck with this? Yeah, that's just. Oh no, <laughs> that's all you're getting. Um, That's interesting because it's talking about stride two, stride thirty-two, but these are hmm. We define a stream from this, don't we? Have interleaved data. I thought that was the point. We'll have to look into that. Okay, no, this is something else. So when we're when we're moving over this. There's position and there's texture. Oh, I guess it's because we're not using... Yeah, so this is buffer slot 2. Yes. So this is a VEC3, which is this. This is a VEC2, which is here. And I guess it's the fact that we're not showing... I um, can't remember where they said it was, but we're not showing the... Disabled items, there we go. Okay, so the shader, what probably happened is when we compiled the shader that's actually using this, it's like, hey, I don't need that data, so don't pass it to me. So then it's disabled, we're not interested in it here. That's cool, okay, right, I can live with that. That makes a bit more sense. Okay, then we get into the vertex shader. Which was... Sphere frag and sphere vert. Here we go, vertex shader, sphere vert. We return, well, we pass two values onto the next stage and we obviously return the coordinates in clip space. So what have we got here? We have a program with a shader and then view. Oh, nice, okay. So this is the vertex shader. And we can do this for shits and giggles, pull G, what's the, uh, yeah, G, P, N, T. Got to pass in a full signature if you're doing that. And that is... Of course, I'm pulling... Sorry. Here I'm just pulling the, um, the GPU function. So it's returning it to us as if it was a pipeline, but it doesn't know how it's going to be used. But if we do draw a sphere... Pull G, draw a sphere... Ah, you muppet. Oh, continue. Um, then, this is what we're after up here. So we can see, oh, that's where those names come from. Yeah, there they are. They're from Vario. Nice. FK, vert, position. I wonder what the FK is. Um, texture, that's exactly the same, obviously. This is just the thing that was passed in for that stage. So that's good that we can explore that too. Let's get back. What else have we got? Disassembly. Oh, nice. So you can... Ooh, I wonder what all this is. GCN. No. Oh, fuck you. Come here. All right, never mind. Whoops. <laughs> okay, never mind. We're only interested in this way at the moment anyway, so that's cool. So that's how we can get to the shader. Then there's the program. So it's sh saying shader 92 and shader 93. If we go back to here, this was shader 92. So shader 93 is going to be... Okay, now we're here. Oh yeah, view contents. There we go. This is going to be our fragment shader. Nice. Nice. 
Yeah, we should have a little comment in there. Good. Groovy, groovy. Um, so with that done, it's interesting that at this point, it doesn't mention... Oh, well, no, I suppose we're not using any textures here, are we? So there's none of this. Oh, that's exciting. That means we're going to get to it there, which is really cool. Now, these are all grayed out. No resource, no resource, no resource. So these are not being used. This is tessellation control, tessellation evaluation, geometry shader. This must be rasterization? Yes, look at this. Okay, so fill mode, solid, cold mode, back. This is all the shit we set from GL, right? There's a lot of stuff here. Depth bias, slope scale, depth clamp. No scissoring, that's disabled. That's going to be really useful. I've got some tests to do with some of this stuff to make sure that state is actually set in the places that I think it is. So being able to capture these frames would be really good. In fact, it could mean that we can use this with some of the tests in some way. I wonder how we could do that. It's interesting. Because I've, I've seen this person work and they're incredibly thorough. Like, well, I've seen them in... There's a... Uh, a chat room which they frequent that I've seen them talking about the particular GL issues they are so determined to cover as much as possible and they get into every fucking nasty thing in GL that I've ever seen it's incredible it's illuminating to watch okay so this is all cool um clip set up all right let's go with that that's going to be some stuff to look into don't think there's anything else here. Oh, scissor regions. Nice. That's cool. And the viewport. Oh, neat. That's really good. In depth, mag depth. That's great. So now we go on to the exciting bit. Fragment shader. Hooray. So this is the texture, right? And we've got a sampler. Here's its settings, which is very easy for us to see them in Keppel. So let's go and find those. Um, where's our sampler? So text would be brick and brick is oh it's just a parameter up there fair enough so let's go here there's the sampler if we wanted what do we want to find out from it i mean we could just inspect the object um do we just allow filter i can't remember minify filter oh we don't know that okay let's just inspect the last thing and we can go in here and we can see that it has um the minify is it's not just linear it shouldn't just be linear it should be linear mipmap linear and magnify should be linear how can i see um those separated or is that not possible interesting it's wrapping here which we can see no this is on repeat addressing wrap okay so we need to find out details about this so, either this is not showing what I'm thinking it's showing, or there is a bug in Keppel. See, a bug is more likely. That's very interesting, though. So we do have a few tests to make sure that that kind of stuff works, but not a problem. We'll get back to that. In fact, we've messed around with wrapping a lot as well. I would be surprised that that's broken. I'm probably just not reading this correctly. Anyway, this, if we click view... Oh, no, of course, we're getting to the fragment uh, stage again. So let's go back to the pipeline. Uh, if we click on texture, that is going to be telling us some stuff. Oh, I want to look at that soon. If I click go, where do... all right. So go takes us to the texture itself. So that's really neat. Um, ah, so right click is is pick, and then left click is pan. That's nice. Very cool. All right. Oh yeah, and the last right-click information down there and the hover information, that is good. So obviously built by people who actually do this stuff. Um, okay, right, what's next? So let's go back to the pipeline. Format, array size, cool. So this is all good. Other than some confusion here. Oh, wait a second, we could... What were we looking at before that I wanted to come back to? It was this bit, texture 60. Okay. Oh, I know what this probably is. Wait a sec. Uh, no. Okay, now I'm still confused. Because the sampler we're using, um, that's where these things are set. So I would expect the texture not to have this kind of stuff set up. Um, 
but the rest I don't know. Okay, so this seems to be the resource initialization parameters. This was how it was set up. That's crazy that it can that it knows that stuff. That's really cool. Okay, so yeah, we called gen textures and we asked for one texture. Sure, and we got a texture back. Um, we then did storage 2D um, to set it up, and then we used subimage 2D to push some bytes um, in a certain format up there as well. That's really neat. Okay. Now we're in the resource tab now. I'm assuming this is other shit, so I'm not going to dive in here. There, there we are. If I double click on this, yeah, we go there. Okay, so this is exploring different things. We'll come back to the resource stuff. Um, Chase is saying, more reasons it's nice Mario generates readable GLSL. Totally, man. Yeah, no, it's just like, let the people that know how to optimize it better optimize it. Saying that, the uh, new compiler that I'm doing for the data processing stuff, that is going to do pretty... Well, it's, it's not intended to be readable GLSL. We're just going to be generating compute shaders and those... And we're optimizing those. Um, I do have a bit of an update on the compiler as well. Just a small one, which I will get back to later. But that's cool. Cool. Then we go frame buffer. Um, I assume that... Ooh. This is interesting. Do we get blending information here? Because that would be really cool. Target blends. Oh, look at this. Right. So if we go back to the code. Let's look at map G. So we have no specific blending defined here. So um, I'm going to make that slightly smaller. It's probably too hard to read there. I'm just thinking of whether I can be cheeky and do this and that. Because it would just be kind of cool to have this sitting down in the corner here. Whoop. Right. Um, let's see, where are we going to go now? Okay, so we don't think there's any blending shit going on here. Um, let's just see what... Do, have we got a current blending params? No. No, blending params is an accessor, if I remember correctly. Enable concurrent hints. I should just use dot swank. Never mind. Yes, blending params is something that takes an FBO and an attachment name and gives you the blending params for that attachment. Um, or you can just take the FBO and it will give you that, I would think. Have to look at the docs. Anyway, important point is we're not doing blending in here. Well, we're not setting any... Oh, we are. Shut my face. There's BP. Is that used anywhere? No references to BP. Doesn't seem so, then. So we've got the default stuff that Kevl sets up here. So the, it's one, zero, add one. Okay. So there's no contribution from the destination color. And all the contribution is coming from the inbound color. And the same for the alpha. And the op is just add. So all of, like, basically, one multiplied by the color coming in, <laughs> add to zero multiplied by the color that's already there. So this will cancel this out and just write this one, essentially. Cool. <laughs> Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Okay, so. Back buffer color, back buffer depth stencil. What kind of resources are these? Okay, so they're considered texture 2Ds, which makes sense. Even though they're the default ones. Ah, oh, so the default is a D24S8. It's kind of interesting. When we go here... Ah, this is interesting. So yeah, this is the default FBO. So it's its resource initialization parameters comes from the context configuration. That's interesting. Let's look at this context object anyway. Oh, we're just going around in circles now. Yeah, back buffer FBO. Whoops. Doot. Yeah, we're just zipping around now. Groovy. It's interesting this is default VAO. That surprises me. Is it really one that was made by them? I would imagine that this was us, but not really sure. 
Maybe they do have a default. I don't know. Right. Okay, so that's pretty rad. And then we got compute shaders if we were using that. That's going to be handy. I'm looking forward to playing with those. Um, all right, so we've kind of made it through the pipeline thing now. We This was the... Let's, let's bring up the uh, web page again. The Mesh Viewer! Oh, yeah, Mesh Viewer, nice. Inspect geometry data that's passed through the pipeline. Both raw data uh, in a grid view and 3D inspection is possible. The tabs in the preview window, yada, yada, yada. This is awesome. Okay, so it's going to get more interesting here, right? Because... Yes, because of this. So the geometry shader in this just adds lines at all the vertex points. So we go down and find geom. There it is. Right, so it basically it, it gets passed in three normals. So it's, it's passed in the normals for a triangle. Uh, well, the normals at the points of, the, uh, of that triangle um, it creates a line strip output, the maximum of six vertices. Okay, so oh yes, because it's going to create a line at every vertex that it's given. And we just call genline three times. And genline is using emit um, to write out a couple of vertices. So one at the base, one at the uh, one at the base, one at the tip, and then it says end primitive. And because we've emitted two things, we're getting a line. Oh, we've already said line strip up here, so that makes sense. Um, yes, so we can see that. Where's P0? Because that's the first one. Okay, so, yeah, we read in GL in. Where did that come from? Now there's something I can't quite remember. It's been a while since I've done geometry shaders, and I'm not sure what API that um, Vario specified for that. Do we have any documentation for that? That'd be cool. No, we don't have GLN like docs for that. But we should do that. It'd be nice. All right. So, but yes. Anyway, it's going to get the position of that vertex, I guess. Um, and then it's just interesting to me that we've named it normals here we do access it okay oh wait i remember now okay so gln this is the so normally our vertex stage here the first thing is passed off to the next stage right we don't ever see this GL position again, um, and the other stuff is passed along. So these are the normals. This is the normals passed here, but because in the geometry stage we have access to this information again, of like for the whole primitive that we're dealing with, and that's in GL in, and then we index into that to, to get it, um, and then we um, use GL position to read that state. So this is an accessor for this. Um, Chimera is linking something. Let me just check what that is. <laughs> I cannot be watching that right now. Um, yes, and so here we're just going, we're taking that root position and we're adding the normal times some magnitude, which would be, where is magnitude coming from? I would have guessed it was. Oh no, there it is. Not point one. Okay, so if we tweaked that number, I guess we would get different length. Yeah, there we go. We get different length uh, lines. Okay, so we're not going to see that state captured in here. But what is cool is we can actually see. Like this is the this is the information that came. Wait a second. So BS input. This is the information that came out of the the uh, vertex shader, and this is the information that came out of the um, geometry shader. So we can just see that. So when in came out in clip space, and then we took that and fucked around with it and made new lines. Neat. 
And here, this one's going to be a lot more boring because we don't have geometry shader out here. We've just got in and out here. Groovy. What else? What else? Okay, there's nothing to look at here. Yeah, there's no other mesh shit we do, so. It's interesting that when we click on this one, we can see all of this, but I suppose that makes sense. All right. Okay, so that's it in its little it's in its little summary. That is cool. So if we click next, it's probably gonna Oh no, it didn't bring back all the stuff. I don't have a whole lot of questions right now, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so Vulcan, not important. Is only supported from 3.2 onwards. Yes. Good. It's alright, Kepler doesn't support anything other than GL core anyway, so that's fine. I'll be back in just one second, sorry. Much better. Right. And I don't have any water here. I should have picked, got that as well. Never mind. So. RenderDoc relies on saving out the graphics command stream and replaying it back at inspection time. This means if a, if a bug is timing machine or driver specific, it is in no way guaranteed to reproduce the bug. Oh, okay, on a different, oh, on a different machine. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Has few runtime times. This is bloody amazing, though. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm amazed they can actually do this. All right, so now we've got this far. Rather than just reading the entire documentation, I want to just look around what else we have here. There's launch application. We've already done that, so I'm going to get rid of that tab for now. Uh, then we've got the resource inspector, and we've got this thing here. So let's just go through the resource inspector and see what we've got. Back buffer color. All right, okay, so this is where it's touched. It's interesting that it's... Why is it not here? Oh, 6 through 11. Okay, so... Yeah, I suppose it had to go to one of them, so it may as well go to... Yeah, it's arbitrary, isn't it? So, um, Context. GL init params. I want to know about that. Is that a thing? GL init params. No. It doesn't look like it anyway. Um, let's have a look. All right, so I, what I want to do now, in fact, is to stop this example, go to a different one, and just see if we can keep using this, or do we have to do anything fucky? So let's go back to, oh, no, not bookmarks. Hook that. Back here. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to come back here. We're going to say stop loop. That's done. Okay, so then we're going to, I guess we can leave this going. Let's see if we can quick load play with verts, which is our normal stuff that we've been tinkering away with for many a week. Um, sorry for the noise of moving the mic there. I'm troubled that you're talking more to the chair than you are to me. Fuck you, boys. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, Chimera before the video, I didn't actually mention what it was. It was Lizard Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Um, a song called Rattlesnake. It's good music, apparently. I will check that out later. Darius is saying, you made some blog post about geometry shader shenanigans, but it seems like your old posts have vanished. The fuck? Okay, thank you. I will have to check that later to see what happened. It's a bit odd. 
Right, so that worked, or it loaded at least. Let's see what we do now. So play with verts and just play, start. And then, you know, gesture wildly and bother the gods and all that kind of crap. Okay, so we're just gonna do reset FBOs. Oh, I love it. I love that we're still going. God damn you, render doc, that's cool. Um, this looks like shit though. I mean, like more shit than I'm expecting. This is super bitty. What's going on here? There we go. That's better. So we've got a lot of fuzzy geometry. Well, fuzzy normals everywhere. I think I'm gonna disable that for a second. Let's go and have a look for code. Dot lisp. Dot play with brutes. And okay. With depth test function nil, this looks like it might be relevant. Boop, there we go. Cool. So this is with our fucked up shadows and all that kind of stuff, but what I want to do is I want to click on here and I want to go bridge screen. And apparently it saves some stuff. Ooh, that took a bit longer. Nice. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got one of these. <laughs> this one's got a few more passes in it, so it'll be fun. Doot, 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 doot. Here we go. Here we go. Right. So, let's go down here. Um, what was the first inspector we were looking at? I can't remember. Anyway, oh neat, here we go. This is gonna be fun. What the fuck? This is cool. Oh yeah, that's gonna be wild, isn't it? Because we we don't batch any of this shit. So we're actually making a bunch of all the draw we're making a draw call for every single object in the scene. Which uh let's go and have a look at the mesh viewer to see what this is. BSN. This is Part of one of these down here. Let's see if we can find something we recognize. Um, let's just do this. There's a sphere. There's some all kinds of crap. <laughs> hey, there's a lion head. Nice. What happens to you? Boom. Oh, is this one? Neat. There it is. Oh, that's really cool. So yeah, that's the first first time it's called, and we can see all this shit here to do with what goes into that. So we bind a vertex array. We set a uniform. Okay, so we upload, this is our uh, matrix V, uh, matrix 4 V, F, V. God damn it. Pick some of those letters and just rearrange them. Don't listen to what I say. Just scramble. This is all coming, this is every bit of this is encrypted on the fly for your pleasure. Fuck's sake, okay. So that's the matrix we uploaded anyway. Very exciting. Looks like an identity matrix. Um, here's another matrix. So this will be, if we go to render, which is going to be nice and hard to read. Let's have a look. Um, I don't know. Asim. Okay, so yes, the vertex stage we do a lot of... But anyway, here it is. Here's the arguments we pass up for the asset models. Three matrices and a scale. So one, two, three, and a scale. And the value was 0 0.20. That's great. We can check that that is correct. And I don't know where actually where it's getting that scale from, so we'll have to go look. Um, wonder what where we get these meshes from. So let's see. We load in this shit probably with assets. Point. Let's just actually just grep for 0 0.2 and see where it comes up. Uh, yeah, sure, save. Why not? Nothing could go wrong. Um... Ah, here we go. Load asim things. We pass in the object, and we have 
what I guess was the scale. Yes. Scale, let's see what we did with it. Boop, boop, boop. Yes, we went uh, mesh to thing, which is another function, which also took that scale. And what did it do with it? It made, oh yes, so when we made an, an instance of these objects that we're, that we're rendering, we stuck the scale in there. And then my bet is when we draw this stuff, let's look at things and asim, asim, no, asim thing. When we draw, here it is. There is the scale. I really love that none of the other uh, values are actually being used. And you can just see that from here. That would make it really easy to tidy some stuff up because we don't need to be pushing those values. All right, anyway. Ah, oh, there's a few things here, like the normal map and all this kind of stuff. So let's have a look. Bind texture. Nice, here we go. Let's look at this texture. Let's look at its contents. Fucking cool. Wait a second, how does it know to associate those two? What the fuck? Oh, this is, oh yeah, this is the texture view for this moment. So we can see both of the thing. Oh, that is really cool. So that is seeing our albedo sampler there and our normal sampler there. That's fucking dope. Okay. Um... Oh yeah, I don't need to double click on them to do that. I just need to single click. Double click is going to do something else. And oh, we'll get to this because that's really fun. Okay, right. One step at a time, one step at a time. Back here. Binding samplers. So we bind a texture, we bind the sampler. That's interesting. We do that every time? I suppose so. I suppose you have to. God, I hate that part of the GL API. It confused me. We set a texture active. We bind the texture, we set a sampler. Okay, yes, because we're passing in two textures. So we're doing that twice, that's just for the normals. We bind the vertex array. This is where we're gonna be getting the vertex, yeah, getting that information from, and we call draw with triangles and all this stuff. That's dope. Okay, so, shit tons of these. Oh my God, look at how many draw calls we've got. We have 3,000 draw calls. So one of the things um, we could be doing um, oh, yeah, that could actually be some fun streams. We could, um, we should be packing this data together in like one big buffer to find um, a vertex array just for that thing. And yeah, then what could we do? Yeah, I mean, we could do all of the geometry in one draw call, for example, which would be a lot better. The other thing we could do for fun, seeing as we added on one of our other streams ages ago, we added um, multi-draw indirect. We could use that. We could turn all of these. We could like try and batch all of these draw calls together by just writing all the details for the draw into an array and then dispatching that. That would be fucking awesome. So that we is something we should look into as well. But this is very cool. Texture viewer. Oh, this is so nice. Do, 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 do. So, I want to get back to our lion again. But I don't know where he is. Let's look at outputs. Okay, that's the outputs for the whole part, isn't it? Okay, that's actually kind of fun. So, let's have a look at this. These are going to be the positions, right? Remember, we were doing that G buffer. This is so cool because it actually maps up with the. Um, oh man, we, we should. Let's look at uh, learn OpenGL. Do, do, do. Fuck you. There we go. Right, and we were looking at. Come on, where is it? Advanced lighting. And we were looking at SSAO. And one other thing of the diagrams right at the top they have real soon was. Look! G buffers! Positions, normals, albedo. And we have positions, normals, albedo, and wait a second. What was this one? Oh, this is the depth stencil. Okay. That's interesting that that is totally white. Ah, uh, that's probably because. I don't know how this works actually. Right. Wonder if what happens if you just set this to be like a hundred? 
Okay, it does allow you to do that anyway, which is kind of interesting. Not that it makes any sense in this scene, but... Cool. Right, positions. Much more interesting. These ones, it might actually make sense to set it to something like 20. Um, and then we can... Let's actually try 120. Dude. I um, don't totally understand what I'm doing here. By totally understand, I mean I don't understand at all. Um, minus 20. 20. Okay, we're seeing some of the geometry here anyway. This is meant to be, I guess this is part of the lion? It's actually kind of hard to work out what's going on here. This is part of the tool I'll definitely have to... Uh, play with some more oh wait we're crazy zoomed in that's why all oh, right now okay let's let's go back here and let's try our uh minus 20 20 again we might actually recognize some of the things that are going on okay yes so now we can see this is our lion head here we can see like our pillar and the thing so this is just the reason we're having to do this remapping here is because these are positions they're floating point values and they could be at anything we've got these are um in clip space Here's our normals, which are a lot easier to reason about. Here's our albedo, which is cool. We've done this um, view ourselves last week. And then we have the depth stencil, um, which is interesting. And I will need to think about that some more in future as well. What's going on over here? Um, On <laughs> says, we're talking to the chair, but listening to you seems fair, right? You know what? When you put it like that, it seems perfectly reasonable. The problem is I talk to myself and don't listen to myself, so it's the complete opposite. But I am on this side of the camera, so I suppose it... Everything is how it should be. Um, okay. Shimera is saying, is Medium still the annoying platform of the day for articles? Fuck Medium. I really... I. I, I just it <laughs> one of them says medium is still annoying and insult to the web itself I just yeah it just blows my mind to be honest like I don't uh, I don't see what value they're adding there other than for a while it was like ooh this is where articles are and so it's almost like a cache thing but I don't trust anything that's written on medium anymore any more than anywhere else so I don't know what the value is um Meanwhile, I'm going fucking insane. The Steamworks API is horrible. Yes. Yes. Every C API convention is found there at the same time. Oh my god. Even horrid shit like pass null in this param, and if you do the second length param, will be filled with the buffer length. Otherwise, the second param should be a pointer. Oh my god, yes. That is, uh, that's like next level GL shit as well. That's really cool. And of course... Oodles of APIs that only have a setter or a getter, but definitely not both. Classic forward compatibility crap. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, sounds like Steam. I am so, like, glad that you're the one diving <laughs> into that API. Because that is horrific. Um, point of him saying, I have to say that the combination of render doc um, and SBCL is mind blowing for someone who's never heard it before. Yeah, it's it's wild, man. Uh, like, this is uh, this is the debugging tool we needed to know about a long time ago. This could have helped on a lot of streams, and I think it will be, like, it'll be a staple. It, it's a bit the only the see the only difficulty with it right now is just that it doesn't fit in very well with what we'd like. It just screen real estate wise, like when I'm in 4K, this is gonna be fucking great. But, um, yeah, it's a little tricky right now. What are we at? We're at 2117. Everything is going well. Nice. So I hope this is... I hope you're enjoying this, by the way. This is a really fun thing to poke around for me. Because this has been on my to-do list for for quite a while. Um, for about... Probably about eight months or something. But I... It, you know what? I just hadn't considered that it, A, it would work on Linux. And B, that it would work with this stuff. It just seemed like, man, those are cool tools. I wish I could have those. Read. Um, but, of course, Jace comes to the rescue and does the hard work. That's I'm, I'm always kind of living off so much of other people's hard work. Um, 
Hey, Tia Soding, good to have you back. Sorry I didn't, like, I only really just noticed you're here. No PHP! <laughs> it's really good. I checked out, say, for the people raiding, it was actually really cool. I, um, I checked out what you guys are up to over there, and it's pretty dope. Um, a lot more uh, different languages than I have in my streams, but they're cool. But today we're just poking at RenderDoc. No PHP for you. No matter what face you put in the chat. Right, so let's keep going through this fucker. Because this... Am I... Oh, really? KVM decided, no, you will not have a cursor. Everything is fucked. Really? Are we going to do this? Is this the game we're playing? Which is just... Fuck Chris. Alright. It seems it is. Let me just go and poke the KVM because. <laughs> Bastards. Right. Around here. Or we do? I can plug it in again. This is the TV you signed up for. Ugh. How many people got things better to do? Right. Okay. So. Oh no. Has it just frozen? Is that what's going on here? It's pretty good. Maybe it's fucked. Because I can, like, when I switch my KVM over to my streaming machine, everything's fine. But this one is not playing. Alright. Okay, let's just, uh, let's say fucking and just do a restart. Because we've only got a little bit longer on the stream. But I don't want to be wasting your time. So let's, um... Let's get rid of this. Um, and... Oh, that's interesting as well. Like, the... Um... Okay, so the capture device is still showing. I'm restarting my machine at the moment. So the capture device is just showing you the last frame. What I'll do when we get this up as well is I want to give you a quick tour of changes to the compiler. Because there's one fun thing in there I've been doing. Let's just make sure I push those changes. See if we can do that before everything boots back up. The answer is no, Chris. You cannot. Because I made some changes to both the type checker. Yeah, do it. Go. The type checker and the compiler. So that'll be handy. Just a few things to push. Come on, Linux. Get booted. All right, fuck you, progress. Let's go back over here. And we're going to see, actually, if the capture device is going to accept this restart, because otherwise we are kind of fucked, aren't we? Um, I blame the Raiders, because everything was going fine before they showed up. So, let's see. Are we going to get... Let's, so, the Philips thing is not allowed to be 4K, because we are punishing ourselves... For the greater good. Let's say apply. And yes. Nice. Okay. Well, that was surprising. Um, groovy. Okay, so we'll take that as a chance to do a diversion. So let me just go and get checkmate. So, um, and right. Let's pull. Sure. And let's go and get tables. And pull. And that's good. Let's bring up Lisp. We will get back to the... Gra probably we'll get... Yeah, we've got plenty of time to get back to the graphics. Well, fuck all of this then. Pack package CFFI does not exist. Okay, probably don't have that in the dependencies then, do I? Uh, Tables.asd... Depends on... No, see if I... That's a new addition, I will admit. Um, and then QL, tables. All is well. Okay, so... Um, Tables.compile. Let's go in there. And let's go... Um, compile query. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so... One of the things I've been doing in the last week is looking at um, opportunities we have for taking a single 
um, data processing, kernel, query, whatever you want to call it, and splitting it into multiple ones we can run in parallel. And the way I've been wanting to do this is, okay, so this is roughly uh, what the code looks like at the moment. This is just a function that will compile, compile a query. Um, I'm going to move some things out. I'm going to call this x. Um, I'm going to move it up here. And this will be y and, well, yeah, we'll just we'll call it y and we'll move this up here and go a. y is a. Um, so to help you read what's going on here, these are the inputs. These are the columns that it's reading from a table. Eventually it'll be multiple tables as well, so you can do joins. Um, the first column is called a. It takes an 8-bit integer. Um, and this column is in and out, so you can read from it and write to it. We'll talk about the writing in a second. Same again here. So this is an out only. Um, so it's not pulling data in. We'll probably change that in a second too. These are uniforms, exactly the same as you would have in GLSL, where it's basically a value that is going to be uniform for the entire run of X, so the entire vertex shader. Well, in GLSL, it's the entire pipeline. Uh, for us, it's going to be the entire invocation of the query, so the entire run through a big chunk of data. Um, and then there is this output clause here, and this is saying, hey, we want to write values back into columns. This can only appear in tail position, um, and that is guaranteed. And there can only be one output. Uh, we also will have discard. That will be the only other thing. So again, similar-ish to the shader things that we've been doing before um, and all that kind of stuff. But the, what we to note here is that when we compiled it, what it produced were two things. We have two blocks here. And this is because, and if we actually have a peek at it, we can see... Um, the, the first one only outputs to A and the second one only outputs to B. And this is because it's able to prove that, hey, this is independent of this. It, basically, it means that this output doesn't rely on any of the intermediate values required to calculate A. A only requires X and B only requires Y. And while they both come from, the data both comes from the same column, um, after that point, it's independent. And the model of our execution is going to be that um, it's, it's, there's always implicit double buffering. So the original idea is kind of like with the GPU stuff, you're always reading from something and writing into something else. There are plenty of opportunities to actually be writing into the same thing if you can prove that nothing else is reading from it simultaneously. Um, but the implication is, to begin with, that... Yeah, you're writing into a fresh buffer, and those will be pointer swapped in. So the double buffering will happen behind the scenes on the tables. Um, so yes, we can do more advanced things here as well. So let's uh, just do a C, which is also an I8 for simplicity. We'll do an in out here. Um, let's say this is B times A, um, and let's bring this down and run it. And fuck you. Um, Oh, right, okay, so it's saying C is declared as an output but is not written to. Okay, in that case, we'll just say it's an in for now. Um, B is not in scope. Oh, yeah, we're trying to read from B. It's not an in. Um, okay. So, again, we can see that we've got two uh, outputs. Um, let's t entangle them so it wouldn't be able to separate them. So if we say that y actually um, is x times a, then we'll need to make this a let's star. Oh yeah, let's star now works as well because I added a macro expander um, a little while ago too. So yes, so now we can see that we only get one function produced because b is relying on y and y relies on x, which is also required for a. So these are entangled together, therefore you're going to get one processing kernel. Um, the advantage of this is that when you split these up, not only can they be run in parallel, but normally there's some kind of simplification that can be made. So we can produce smaller code, which is better for that L1 cache stuff. Um, will also be nice for GPU uh, functions because we get less divergence, which is... Oh, will we get less divergence? Possibly. That's actually an unsubstantiated claim. We'll get back to that one. Um, but basically, yes, compiler is still making progress. Um, th the point I'm at now is actually getting quite good. So with this done, I'm currently working on the first version of, a, of the table data structure. So what we'll have behind the scenes. 
that means I can then generate, start generating code that will iterate over that and do work. The first version I'm going to do is the fallback, which is just going to generate opt, well, yeah, pretty um, standard common lisp with type declarations everywhere and throw speed in there and shit like that. And so it will be using CFFI and it will just go and process the data using that. So that'll be the fallback mode. With that done, we get to doing SIMD, which is gonna be really cool. And that's when I'll probably bring this stuff back onto the stream and we'll work on this together again, because that'll be really fucking cool. Because yeah, all of this work is so that we can get around and uh, do some cool SIMD stuff on a project that actually feels more meaningful than, oh, let's add a load of floats together in parallel. That'd be fun. Which it was, but yeah. more. I want more. Right, so what now? We have to get all back to the same fucking state that we had before. So let's get the export SBLCL home. Uh, let's get the, what the fuck was it called? Uh, yeah, render doc. That. Do that. Go. Right. Then we have to, we should make a script for doing all this setup, but what the fuck? It doesn't matter. Quick load. Swank. And then swank, create server. Uh, don't close is true. Right, now we've done that. We can slime connect. No, we can't because we need to shut this down first. Go away. Um, slime connect to this. Good. So now that's there. Uh, what are we going to want? We are going to want... Um, Yeah, let's actually bring it and play with verts. With verts. I don't think we need to specify. Ah, oh, fuck, it doesn't hurt. Go! Um, once we've got that, we need to go and find render doc, because that's what we were playing with before. Q render doc. Hoo! And then hopefully we can go into launch application. We can make this full screen so I don't kill myself. With rage. Oh no, we don't do that. We do attach to running. We do this. Connect app, we'll pray to those gods, and eventually this will load. Um, let's do this, let's, oh fucking hell Chris, come on, sort your shit out. Right, in package, play with verts, where was it, there we go. And then play, start, do this, and hopefully something will come up, it'll be, oh yes, good. That looks promising. And it's currently loading in all the objects very slowly because we haven't... We should also do that. We should test to see how much... Ooh, look at that. It's like doom. Right, uh, reset. Yep, there we go. Um, we should take our... We should make a custom binary format for our models because it will load in a lot faster. Oh, man, this all looks so terrible. God damn, I know I've screwed up these normals or something. I wonder if I just haven't normalized something. It's always something like that. Right. Okay, with that done, let's close that, because we don't need that. Let's shove this over here. We're just going to squish it the hell up. Boop, boop, boop. Um, we'll do another reset to get everything back kosher again, which is nice. And then we bring that back. Ooh. What the fuck? There we go. There's a lion. And if we go here and say print screen, and we should get this. You see OpenGL is active. We've got that guy. And then hopefully dun 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 dun, dun because we've got thousands of draw calls. <laughs> Chimera, don't make another binary format. Wee! <laughs> no! Let's make more terrible things. Come on, look at this. None of this is needed. Alright, anyway. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Right, so texture viewer, outputs. Here's our um here's where we were roughly before what we had. Oh um our positions and our uh does that actually make it better or worse? Who knows? Yeah, so these are our positions written into our G buffer. These are our normals, here's our albedo, here's the depth. Um, and then we are going to look at other stuff. So we've got a clear here, and then we've got another draw instance. This is our SSAO pass, which isn't phenomenally clear, but let's bring it up and you can see it anyway. Um, there's a lot of noise. Oh, wow, the noise is really interesting, actually, when you get it up close. That's really cool. 
the noise is introduced by that tiny random uh, randomization kernel we've got. It's cool. Um, <laughs> Shimera is shouting at me still. Like GLTF. That'd be really cool, actually. If there's the um, if someone's got a GLTF library for uh, that we can use with Lisp, that'd be great. I suppose that um, class imp, um, assimp will have that soon, won't it? That'd be good. Okay, because if I s actually know as because that's the thing, assimp is going to put it into its own format first. I'd kind of like to just get the fucking bytes and you know. Right. Um, There was a question. Can someone tell me what the fuck size of buffer I should allocate for pH value buffer? For PCH value buffer. Because it says PCH. What is that? I'm not sure. Get item definition prop. Oh, right. This is Steam stuff. <laughs> I'm not touching that. Can't fool me. I've got enough pain in my life. I write Lisp. Okay, so. What have we got here? Let's just have a look. Um... Let's see what we can find out about um, this operation that we did here. It'd be nice if there was an expand all, to be honest. So this, there was GL clear here. It's interesting because I would have thought, oh, there it is. Look, this is really nice. So there's our bind frame buffer. And, oh, it doesn't know... That's interesting. It doesn't know what frame buffer it is bound. But there's another bind frame buffer here. Why are there two? Okay, so... Oh, and there's draw buffers in the middle of this. What the fuck is going on? This is strange. Okay. So, before it was saying that it grouped all these things by kind of like draw calls and stuff. Which has done a lot of draw calls there. In something it calls the color pass. But then this GL clear has quite a lot of things going on inside it. Like, I would have expected it to have made a group around this as well. So I wonder what we've got. So after that color pass, let's look at the code and see what we actually did. Um, play with verts. Play, yeah, sure. Um, play with verts. There we go. I can computer. Right. Um, step, yeah. So we do, where is it? This, this is the one with thousands of draw calls. Because we just loop through and draw all the things. Um, and then we have a with FBO bound. Ah, look at this. So, because we've got a with FBO bound here, um, it has to unbind that FBO, or it at least has to reset the FBO back to what it was at the end of that scope, which means it's going to be rebinding the default frame buffer. So when we get that GL clear here, it's disabling something. It's disabling blend, fine, um, because um, with FBO bound by default, we'll also put in a. It's not the easiest to see there, but. If we look at the, oh yeah, of course, we've restarted, haven't we? So we can't see the hints yet. There we go. Um, there's a thing down here specifying whether with blending is used. And by default, I think it is. Let's look at the documentation. So with blending. Okay, I wouldn't have expected that to be enabled. So let's just see what code it generated. It generated a lot, that's what it generated. Okay, so it does put a with blending in down here, which is interesting. Now, is that just because it, yes, okay, with blending is T by default. It's interesting that that doesn't show up. I guess they just don't show that in the signatures down here. That's fine. I should add that to my documentation though to make that clear. Okay, so yes, this is um, binding an FBO and setting the um, viewport, it's setting the blending, it's setting all those things. And so at the end of this scope, um, it would have to unbind it again. Um, <laughs> it was a rhetorical question. <laughs> Can't fool me with your rhetorical questions. Can't 
can't have a library since you want to deserialize into your own structs. Well, no, I just don't want it to be, like, I don't want there to be a ton of processing when the thing is loaded in to move it into yet another format is really the the thing. I don't, I don't want, yeah, I don't want that part. Because I don't, I just don't feel like the classm stuff, I mean, it's great. It's, it's helped me get a long way, but I'm not sure GLTF is easier made for fast loading. Right. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I just, I was saying, I was kind of, what I was meaning, but didn't say with my face, is that, um, yeah, I'm just not convinced by this. Well, we'll have one format that kind of rules them all. I'm like, like, so having a whole bunch of formats and converting them into that central one, like um, Asim does, that was the bit that's kind of like, eh. But, um, but GLTF, yes. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, I'm super glad they're doing that format. I hope it I hope the fucking entrenched graphics tools make it make decent exporters, you know, or whoever, whoever gets to do that. That would be really nice. Because that's the main thing with the FBX stuff. It just it's really easy to work with, my, with artists and stuff like this, because like getting you, you get out something relatively reasonable. Um, yeah. OK, so back to the snooker. So, yes, we do all this um, and then We've got disabling of blend, rebinding the default F VAO, fine, sure. Um, binding the null frame buffer, I guess. <laughs> yes, okay, so that's us binding back to the default frame buffer at the end of that scope. Draw buffers, oh, draw buffers. No, I'm thinking this is a draw call. I'm an idiot. I've done so much work with draw buffers recently. This is the thing that says, hey, if you're rendering out multiple outputs, which attachments of the FBO do these write into? And that makes sense because if we look at with FBO bound, um, at the end of this scope, we just go through all this garbage. It needs to do a draw buffers to restore what was bound at the beginning. So at the beginning, like it has to bind, um, it has to set up the attachments that are going to be drawn into. So at the end, it has to restore what was there before. So that's that crap. Does that make sense now? Um, doot, doot, doot. Then the viewport is done twice, which is shit. Okay, so we need, so this is a bug. <laughs> I want to get rid of at least one of these. Or maybe it's not that expensive, but. This is the kind of needless state changes that I hate from higher level APIs. It's why Keppel has that little context thing, even though it's it's a pain in the dick. Um, okay, so then we've got bind frame buffer. We've got a new frame buffer. Let's go and see this. So it's this one. What? Okay, okay, these are all the different buffers. Wow, that's really awesome. All the vertex arrays. Why are there so many vertex arrays? Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because we produce a stream to go with every single one. God damn, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's see how this frame buffer was created. Oh, this is so neat. God damn, I love this tool. Uh, yeah, we've got, we made an attachment. We made an attachment zero. Okay, yes, let's look at this. Okay, this is just us setting. So we generated the frame buffer and then we're setting up the parameters uh, for the attachment to make sure that everything is complete. So we've got our layers. Um, we've got our attachment stuff here. This is the texture that we would be writing into. I wonder if we can go see that as well. View contents. There are no contents. Boo. I would really like a back button in this. How do I go back? I don't think that was it. Damn. Okay, right. Let's minimize this again. Poof. And go back to whatever that was. Resource inspector. There we go. So that's, oh, I felt some lag there. Please don't crash again. We're near the end of the stream. Um, okay, so that's that crap. And then we get a, um, there's another draw buffers in a GL clear. Ugh. Okay. 
And I guess the reason for that is, so we come out of here. Oh yes, and this is the binding of the frame buffer, the draw buffers and the GL clear that is here. So that makes sense. That's this bit amounts to all those draw calls. And then we're gonna do another, well, sorry, to another GL call, like API call, I suppose they call them. Um, and then we've got another draw call here. Let's go check that out, because that'll be this. I wanna see what the things are. So with the inputs were our buffers, and this is our noise texture. This will be interesting. Let's have a look at this guy. How do I, oh yeah, I'm looking at a dedicated view here. This. Oh, nice. You can view it. So it's interpolating there, which is not how we reread it when we're in the shader. We read it like this. Um, so that is good to know that it works like that. Okay. That's neat. Is there anything else? No. Okay. So yes, we do GL draw array instanced. Um, we pass in triangles. There's only one instance count, and we're doing six points because that is going to be our quad um, that we are using for this stage. So we can see what we're passing in here. Quad stream, that is going to be the six vertices they're talking about there. I wonder if we can get any information on that. So if we look at vertex array, it's using a buffer. Now buffer data is 48 bytes. We can't go any deeper. <laughs> I don't think we can see what the contents of it are. Even though that'd be kind of cool. It wouldn't be much to, like it'd be the kind of thing we really want to look in the mesh because, or some kind of view that's a bit more friendly. Because um, there's not gonna be much we can tell from that. Um, what's been going on in chat? Hey, Karam. Um, yeah, we're looking at render doc at the moment, it's cool. Yeah, it's using Qt. Okay, so this. How many calls have we got here? Because. Okay, so this. Let's go back into the pipeline state stuff. So. Inputs, outputs. What is going on? All right. This. Oh, this is nice. Okay, so I'm going to have to zoom right back out now. Can we uh, fit? There we go. Oh, we flipped it. I didn't want to do that. So this, though it's hard to see. Is there a way to bring... Oh, no. Let's see if we can bring down... Oh, wonderful. That's great for the stream. Okay. So this was our input, and you can see that it's really noisy. Um, and this pass that we're looking at right here is the blur pass. So if we go and check out the outputs we can see that they look good. So this was what we took in, this is what we put out. Um, the program we used to do that is this one, which had, well, the, this shader is gonna be very boring, so there's no point probably looking at that one. Uh, I, I think this is the vertex shader, let's have a look. Yes, vertex stage, very little going on here, it's just a re remapping of values. Um, and But the second one, we view the contents. This is where we do the blur, and it's a simple two by two blur um, that the tutorial said, yep, it's fine to do. Um, little Black Rain Cloud is saying, I play in Unity, but this program is above my pay grade. We're, we're just poking, this is a tool made by smart people, and we're just looking at it and going, oh, look at all these values, aren't they pretty? I'm not sure if I like how much useful information you get out of it, but it's gonna be very good for, because I am I work on that, um, library that wraps a lot of GL stuff in a kind of high level interactive way. This is going to be really handy for me confirming like whether I fucked up or not, which would be nice. Um, so yeah, it's really a getting familiar thing because we want to be, um, be able to uh, basically at the drop of a hat during a stream, if we start seeing issues, we want to be able to load this guy up. We want to replicate the problem and then we want to be able to go through and inspect. So we kind of have to get a bit familiar with it. I suppose that's what we're doing now. If we are doing anything, that's what we're doing. So that's cool. 
Does RenderDoc somehow record this stuff? That is exactly what it does. It somehow records this stuff. Um, it seems to be capturing API calls and, and then can recreate all the stuff in between. It's, it seems to be doing some playback stuff because they mentioned that it wouldn't be consistent across different machines. But it is wild that it can get all the values from like, yeah, that it's getting all the textures, that it's getting all, like, it's really impressive. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty blown away. I mean, I knew this was the kind of thing they were going for, but it's just so good <laughs> that we can go into all this stuff. It's really nice to see this kind of a shit. Like, when I'm seeing redundant calls and it makes me sad and it's a real motivation to go in and make Keppel better. Um, it's Chimera saying it basically provides a stub DL library that wraps all the cores and records it. That's cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but still, the work in actually extracting sensible, getting anything sensible out of GL is like... Pfft. The magic of late binding. <laughs> yes. We know all about that in Lisp. Right, so... That is cool. Um, whoa, we're frozen. Uh, Randadoc is not. Oh, Jesus, what is going on? Quick, bail, bail, bail. I think we're about to lock up. Fuck, what is going on? Something is really not happy. <laughs> I'm just going to keep on quitting programs until we recover. What is going on? Oh no, that's just dividing up the screen a shit ton. Oh no, we're back. Okay. We're somewhat in control again. Okay, so there is something really f fucky there. Because I imagine that's what was the, um, what I missed last time. The kind of bit just before the whole machine locked up. That's kind of gash. So, I'm going to have to tinker around that a bit more and see if this is going to be a consistent problem. I'm not sure what we do if it is. Yeah. When it's running, there's a memory counter that keeps going up. That's a good point, right? I think you're leaking graphics memory. Hmm. Okay, that would make a lot of sense. Um, then we need to not do that. <laughs> Shemira's saying, oh, by the way, you've leaving me on tenterhooks here. Give me more. Okay, so what have we got? We've got 10 minutes left. Let's look at it again. I want to find out what that memory thing was. Because someone else saw it. I'm clearly not reading properly, which is no surprise to anyone who's been here before. Um, Random dog capture. Doodly do. Quick load. Swank. God, I'm so glad we weren't doing real coding tonight because I am fried. Um, create server. Don't close. T. Nice. Then we will get over here. We will slime connect. Got that. Uh, we will go and find Red Dog and do that. Um, and let's make this a little bit smaller. Actually, no. Let's uh, make it that way. Doot, doot. Um, let's play with verts. The Steam API docs don't agree with the actual provided headers more than once now. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw one of those, but that that is... Gross and, unfortunately, just not surprising. What a heap of shit all that is. Okay, play with verts. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do play. Let's bring it over here. Okay. Let's do this. Oops. Oh yeah, because we... I'm an idiot. Can't remember what I'm doing half the time. Right, okay, so we are running again. That's a lot of memory. Okay, yes, so that's what's been going on. You're right. Um, that's RenderDoc. So, now we have a countdown to find out what's go what, what this is doing and how to slow it down. Like, how do we clear chunks? Like, how do we do a reset? 
Oh, this is the perfect time to look at, um, where is it? What we were... <laughs> the kind integration by a lovely fellow who lives in our chat. Um, Simdi, 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 none of this. Um, where is the shit that I'm actually interested? There we go, render doc. Oh, I can't wait to go through all this. There's so many fun things to read up on. It's great. Okay, so we are going to be using seal, let's seal render doc. Let's see what's in the API already. But we'll do a quick load. QL. Quick load. Ah, but yes, that's not on quick list, is it? I am stupid. Let's grab this. Let's go and put it in code lisp, and we will go. We won't do that. We'll go eshell. Um, I'm sure. Nice. Now we're here. Did we quit it? Doesn't matter. Um, okay, so let's then do QL register local projects, and then hopefully we can do render doc. Ooh, 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 new toys. CL render doc. And what do we have? We have get API version, but let's test that works. Doot. Let's look at launch replay UI. That's really cool. And we've got trigger capture. And then we'll launch replay. Yes. I love it. That's really cool. Dude, thank you so much, Jace. So we don't have that wrapped yet. Let's see if we can find out what this chunk stuff is. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. It's it's struggling. It's struggling. What I should really do, I suppose, is actually just rather than... Uh, let's just stop. I mean, it's boring, but, you know, at least... Uh, at least we got that. Ooh, what is all this shit? doing right render doc um let's search this for chunks okay so behind the scenes what data is gathered capturing frames replaying and analyzing captures so yeah so it's wow that is so bright um boop. um for it to be able to track all that state, it's having to keep the whole history of what's going on. Um, so, what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, so we got multiple render docs open now. That's interesting. No, what's this one though? Is this just, this is the problem like, Okay, no, that is uh, that is a render doc too. That's our GL frame. Yeah, so it's having to keep that whole history for it to be able to recreate our thing. So how do we? There must be a way to reset that, right? Maybe there's not, but I hope there is. Only sports the core profile of OpenGL 3.2 and up. So do we. We open, do 3.3 and up, I think. Multiple contacts and multi-threading. <laughs> we don't. Well, we can, we do support that. We don't do it. Um, extension support. Don't do anything with extensions right now. Actually, no, we do. That's a lie. Um, replay requirements. Okay, let's be lazy and let's do this. Doot, doot, and then we go. Um, chunks, uh, cite that. Okay, the serialized data is stored in memory in a chunk based representation. Although it's up to the driver implementation, it is generally ref counted such that resources which end up becoming unbound and destroyable have their memory overhead deleted. All right. When the capture button is hit, the driver will, act, will enter active capturing. 
upon the beginning of the next frame. In this state, every API call is serialized out in order and any initial content states are saved. Once this frame completes, this frame captures serialized to disk along with the in-memory data for any resources referenced by default resources which are not referenced and not included in the capture. So this thing here, the initializes in a background capture state and the state is up to the specific implementation about what it serializes and it's almost the end of the episode. Um, that's cool. So our homework is find out if this can be reset and stopped and started at will because that would be really nice. It would suit our interactive development a bit more because otherwise we're just going to crash. Um, well, we'd have to restart the image and that would be disappointing. No, yeah, we'd have to... Uh, no. Um, and it'd be also nice if we could make a, a nice lisp a, li a way from lisp to... Hmm. It'd be really cool if we could, yeah... Have something we could attach once Lisp is already set up, so we could do this partway through a session. Like, oh, we found an issue. Let's connect to it and do that kind of stuff. So that'll take some experimenting. I know that Jace has tried doing some of that before, so I expect it's going to be tough. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. We're pretty much at the end. So I'm just going to go through the chat, see what's happening. If you've got any questions, statements, or you just want to yell PHP some more, then please do. Um, yes. Do, do, do. We're blaming the raid. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice. <laughs> but maybe you can switch the active window to a null window or something. Maybe. Um, can't attach render doc after the fact if you remember correctly. Cool. Bug number 32. Lisp. All right. That's it. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Uh, next time is going to be two weeks from now, unless you want to stop by the Tail Spire Alpha update thing. But if you're not in it, probably isn't going to mean much. Thanks so much for stopping by. Peace.